Last year, I went on this architectural tour around Beijing to check out some of the city's most mind-blowing structures. From the tallest tower in town to an egg-shaped theater, these marvels have become the face of modern Beijing, defining its skyline and attracting attention. Because if Ryan Reynolds took a selfie with the CCTV tower, then it must be worth a look. Huh. Today, I'm back again with another collection of buildings, no less iconic, but not for the same reasons. You see, these creations are ugly, at least according to one Chinese survey. But first, let's back up a bit. Ever since we humans realized we can do much better than just living in caves, our pursuit for a place to call home or work or just chill has been a true wild game of architectural roulette. Throughout history and across geographies, we've witnessed some stunning wonders like the Forbidden City, the Taj Mahal, and the Palace of Versailles. True masterpieces that leave us breathless. But not every design nails it. Sometimes creativity takes the wrong turn or the back seat or just a really, really long nap. And so we end up with buildings that are, let's just say, eccentric, unconventional, or just out of touch with reality. They evoke such a strong visceral reaction in people and we slap them with the label ugly, even though, let's just be clear, ugly is such a loaded and subjective word that means different things for different people. But here's the thing, the internet absolutely loves these architectural mishaps. Online, there's an endless black hole of lists showcasing questionable designs from all over the world. Even the architectural community can't resist chiming in. Architectural Digest has its own compilation of skyscrapers that didn't quite meet the mark. It includes this gigantic basket building in Ohio, a mushroom tower in Milan, and an office skyscraper in Paris that triggered a ban for 42 years on tall buildings in the city center. Ouch. In the UK, there's even an architecture prize, the Carbuncle Cup, for the country's most unattractive building. Ouch again. China also has its own version of this, China's ugliest buildings poll. Ouch by three. It started in 2010 by this architecture site in Beijing called Chengyan. In their first ever list, the panel of experts explained why bad buildings are just bad. They said they're a waste of resources, from manpower to materials. And they amount to visual pollutions for urbanites. And between brackets, that's why the public also gets to vote on this list, although the ultimate decision is in the hands of the experts. And last, these buildings create a breeding ground for more monstrosities. If it's done before, someone might think it's okay to repeat the mistake but it's not okay. Now, there are nine cardinal sins that would get you on this list. They include sacrificing function for form, copying existing designs, and just being downright weird. These standards have stayed the same for 13 years, but what qualifies as ugly has evolved with time. Let me give you a for example. In the 2010 edition of the survey, we had this gem shaped like a liquor bottle. You could argue it's pretty, but Good luck trying to convince anyone. In 2020, we had a hotel in Guizhou making the cut. It might be aesthetically pleasing, but it feels like it crash landed in the middle of these mountains. And so ugly not only refers to wonky proportions or dull facades or bizarre layouts, it's also about buildings that are irrelevant or that are dissociated from their context or their environment. And honestly, over the years, no Chinese city has been immune to this survey. And so today we're hitting the streets of Beijing to locate some of the buildings that have been officially christened as ugly by this list. Let the sightseeing begin. We're starting off with this dragon-shaped building complex. And I know what you're thinking. Where is the dragon? I don't see it. Well, this dragon right here, a couple of years ago, had a plastic surgery to remove its head. But here's how it used to look like before. See? A true dragon. And if you're a fan of the Transformers franchise, you've definitely seen this one on the big screen. Yeah. 
This is Pangu Plaza, and it was designed by Chinese architect Li Zuyuan, who is the mastermind behind Taipei 101, one of the tallest skyscrapers in the world. For this project, he wanted to marry the Eastern soul with Western skills to create an international landmark with a true Chinese flair. And what's more Chinese than a dragon? Four buildings, all lined up in white granite, made up the body and tail of the dragon, and the tallest building, building number five, acted as the head, with previously a wavy structure at the back to emulate the horns of the creature. And this complex is the perfect example of a structure where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Because seen individually, these buildings don't really amount to much. They're boxy and don't quite stand out, but together they form something truly imposing and meaningful. The main highlight of the Pangu Plaza has always been its tallest building. And for a while, there was confusion over whether building number five was actually a dragon head or an Olympic torch. And there's reason for that. First, the project was built as part of a construction boom around the area that preceded the 2008 Olympic Games. And two, this structure is a stone's throw away from two very iconic Olympic venues. The blue one is the water cube or the National Aquatic Center. And further down, that is the mesmerizing bird's nest or the Beijing National Stadium. You can still see the shape of the dragon heads in these decorations at the bottom of the building. But what happened to the head on top? Where did it go? We don't know for sure, but what we do know is that in 2021, work began on the top and bit by bit, the tip was clipped. And there are a few theories being floated online as to why this happened. Some say it's related to bad feng shui. Others say that the head was protruding too much into the air and it caused a safety hazard. And a third theory is related to the planning direction of Chaoyang district where we're currently at. And reportedly city planners want to tidy up and clean up the space and sort of remove anything that jots out abruptly especially that this neighborhood is of historical value given that this is exactly where the Olympic Village is and that it sits along the all too important central axis of Beijing. But whatever the reason was, this long is gone and this long is taking you to our second destination. Let's go. You've probably heard of the Ming Dynasty and the Qing Dynasty, but I bet you, you haven't heard of the Bling Dynasty. Look at all that gold, yes! This is insane, but in the most positive possible way ever. This is Jinchen Time Building, and this is exactly how you stand out. 123 meters of gold painted glass curtain walls. This is the way to grab attention. The design of this structure is inspired by yuan bao or gold ingot, which was used as currency in old China. And gold, the color, is favored in Chinese culture because it's auspicious, prosperous, and historically linked to the imperial family. The color yellow was only worn by emperors. But this gold, well, this gold belongs to a different family called Tu Hao Jin or Tacky Rich Gold, which has spawned a generation of buildings across China from a huge puffer fish to a massive hold coin. Tu in Chinese means dirt, Hao means rich, and Tu Hao is a dig at people who have the cash, but not the class or the manners or sophistication, or just wealthy people who like to show off their wealth. And this structure behind me is blatantly, unapologetically show offy. And you know what? I love it. Go big or go home. And this went big, pure gold. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Grand Metro Park Hotel. 
This is a recent addition to the club of ugly buildings and was officially selected in 2021. The hotel has been in operation since 1994, but it hasn't always looked like that. Since 2004, it has undergone many facelifts and apparently that's where the problem is. The panel of experts said that these successive renovation attempts have failed to improve on the original defects of the design and that the more changes to the exterior, the uglier it gets. Originally, this hotel looked like a gray castle with conical roofs that were painted in gold. It had these protruding edges, which even in pictures felt pointy, like they could poke you. A few surgeries later, this is how it looks. You see the glass curtain wall in the middle. The edges still look a little bit jagged, but somehow feel more restrained. And at the top, you have these inverted canopies that look like blooming flowers. But it seems that this is not enough for the architects who said that the design risks damaging the image of the East Gate of Beijing. And for reference, they mentioned the East Gate of Beijing because we are in San Yuan Xiao and the airport expressway is right behind me. Me, on the other hand, honestly, I think that there has been a huge improvement from the first version all the way to this. Like, I'm not too bothered by it. I'm not gagging about it, but I'm also not bothered by this. And at the end of the day, we can all agree to disagree. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section as I make my way from the east side of Beijing all the way to the west for spot number four. And last but not least, the Sinchuang Plaza. It might look like your regular commercial office building, but the internet has not been kind to it since its construction in 2013. You see, people came up with a whole lot of names to describe it. The hula hoop, stacked plates, silkworm pupa. They really ran their imagination wild on this one. But the name that stuck the most is the Large Intestine Building or Da Chang Lo, and it's all because of its design. This tower has oval-shaped floors that slightly rotate their angle at every story, giving it its signature curvy, twisted outline. People online said it reminded them of Absolute World Complex in Ontario, Canada, but that one is much taller with an hourglass shape. Interestingly, Absolute World was designed by Mai Song, who is a Beijing-born Chinese architect, one of China's best-known architects in the world. But honestly, I can't really bring myself to hate on this design because it looks unique, it's innovative. I mean, sure, it looks like a crashed soda can, but it's not an eyesore. At least for me, it isn't. You know, as long as buildings are being built, there will always be different opinions about them. Because we are humans and we don't agree on the same thing and we don't like the same thing and judging is second nature to us. And beauty is truly in the eye of the beholder. Not only is it personal and subjective, but it's also ever evolving. And that reflects itself in architecture. The kinds of buildings that we've seen today, the flashy, the knockoff, the confusing are truly a dying species in cities across China because the country's architectural philosophy, standards, and know-how have improved over time. And with this, I come to the end of this video. This was all from me for this week. I will see you next time. Zaijian.